Members of the royal family are blessed for sure. They've been given incredible benefits. But did you know that believers in Jesus are far wealthier than the members of the royal family and have been given even better benefits than them? I don't believe that most Christians really truly understand what has been done in them or what has been offered to them. That's why I'm tackling this subject, words that every believer needs to know. And today's word is justification. Stick with me. You don't want to miss it. Imagine that you have been convicted of murder and you stand before the judge waiting for sentencing. He knows you're guilty because all the evidence is stacked against you. You tremble as he glares down at you. Your future is in his hands. And then the moment comes when he takes that gavel in his hands and he pounds it on his desk and he declares for the whole courtroom that, that you have been acquitted of all your charges. You've been acquitted of all your charges. Oh my goodness, you're stunned. How can that be? And then he says, you are free to go and all the charges against you have been expunged from your record. Now we know that in the real world, this rarely happens, but in the spiritual world, this happens every single day and with every believer who puts their faith in Jesus. So let's now tackle that word justification. It actually means to be declared righteous. It doesn't mean that we're holy it simply means that we are not guilty before God. And you know, that's really amazing since we really are guilty because of our sins. Paul writes in Romans 5, 12, when Adam sinned, sin entered the world. Adam's sin brought death, so death spread to everyone for everyone sinned. But justification declares us not guilty. Justification is all the way throughout the Bible. We read in Genesis 15, 6 that Abram believed the Lord and the Lord counted him as righteous because of his faith. And David writes in Psalm 32, 1 to 2, Oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sin is put out of sight. Yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of guilt, whose lives are lived in complete honesty. While justification is throughout the Bible, it's really predominantly in Paul's writings since it's a New Testament word because every believer is justified. Today, I want to address three important facets to justification how we received it, what it offers us, and how it changed us. Let's look at how we received it first. There are two things. Justification is, ma is made possible, one, through the blood of Jesus Christ. Paul writes in Romans 5, 9, And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. Jesus sacrificially went to the cross for you and for me so that we might be justified. And two, justification is given to us through our faith in Christ. We cannot earn it. Our parents cannot give it to us and we cannot climb up the justification ladder. We are justified in Christ the moment that we put our faith and trust in Jesus. Paul says in Romans 1 17, this good news tells us how God makes us right in his sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. As the scriptures say, it is through faith that a righteous person has life. Justification is one of those amazing benefits that are given to us in Christ. Let's now look at what justification offers us. First, it offers us a right standing with God. We read in Romans 5, 18. Yes, Adam's one sin brings condemnation for everyone, but Christ's one act of righteousness brings a right relationship with God and new life for everyone. 
This phrase, right relationship, is translated peace in other translations. And it can also mean wholeness or joined together. That's what happens when we're justified. We are joined together with God and we become whole. Kind of like a couple who's about ready to get married. Before their wedding day, they are two separate entities. But the Bible tells us that the moment that they are pronounced husband and wife, they are joined together and the two become one. Basically, our justification makes us one with God. One with God. And of course, this also has future significance because the Bible tells us of a day in heaven one day when the bride of Christ will be united and married to her bridegroom. Second, our justification offers no eternal condemnation. Paul writes in Romans 5, 9, and since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. And then again, in Romans 8, 1, there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. This word condemnation is another word for wrath, punishment, anger, or vengeance. God promises to punish the sinner with eternal darkness or what the Bible calls hell. Jesus calls it outer darkness. Imagine being in a place where there is no light, where you can't even see your hand in front of your face. Well, that's what kind of darkness this will be. There'll be no light. In addition to that, Jesus tells us in Luke 13, 28, that it'll be a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth, a terrible, torturous place for all of eternity. But our justification rescues us from this place and it offers us a home with Jesus forever. Third, our justification offers us reconciliation. Paul writes in Romans 5.10, For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. This word reconciliation means restoration of favor. In other words, we have found favor in God's eyes. He takes great pleasure in us. And fourth, our justification offers us full pardon. It offers us full pardon. It acquits us. It releases us from the penalty of our sins. Jesus said it best in John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. You know, this is probably one of the most famous verses in the Bible. Yet how many hear it but reject Jesus? This is a glorious promise for sure that we will be fully pardoned of all of our sins because of our justification. So now the question becomes, how does our justification change us? How does it change us? Well, here are two ways. First, our justification provides us with a new identity. We read in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, a new life has begun. The other day I was watching a show and someone was talking about a pilot and of the pilot he said flying is not what he does but it's who he is and you know I really believe that people even Christians often think of themselves that way that their identity is in what they do for the world that could be very true but for the Christian that is so wrong our identity is in Christ. It's in Christ, not in what we do. We belong to him and his name is emblazoned on our hearts. And two, our justification provides us with hope. It provides us with hope. There's nothing greater in this life than walking every single day 
with hope. We all need it. And our justification offers us hope. So what does this mean for us? Well, it means that since we are justified and made right with God, that we are to live differently than the world. Since our identity is in Christ, unbelievers need to see Christ in our actions, our words, and in the way that we live. The world should recognize us as a Christ follower. Paul tells us in Romans 6, 4 that we are to walk in newness of life. So with this topic before us, aren't you thankful for your justification? 